Now, the other thing you've mentioned about love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we all verbally acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps through our keyboard um, writings, we do even make it very much visible. However, when it comes to actions, there's a lacking. So just merely saying, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we don't follow it up with action. How truthful are we to ourselves? Yeah, this is, this is something that we're always going to be lacking. Okay, that's the first thing. We're human beings, we're deficient. But what Allah wants from us is to push ourselves to the maximum we possibly can in terms of righteous actions. Knowing that, we're going to fall short and he's ready to forgive us when we fall short. But he wants us to put in the effort. And the problem is, sometimes we make the excuses, you know what, I'm too tired, I can't do it. Who said you can't do it? And are you being true to yourself when you say, I can't do it and I'm too tired, really? Because Allah knows your capacity. And the Prophet wasallam he actually said, In Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum. He doesn't look at your shapes and your forms. Walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. Rather, what Allah looks at is your heart and your actions. So our religion, Al-Islam, is not about speech, merely speech. Our deen is all about what's contained in your heart, the sincerity to Allah, the love for Allah, which then manifests itself in righteous actions. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, in the famous hadith that we all know, أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ That if the heart is sound and pure, then the body will be pure and sound. You will move to righteous actions. And the pinnacle of that, after all the prophets, is Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If you think about Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there was no one who was ahead of him when it comes to righteous action. He was the first. He was the one who did the most. He was the one who sacrificed the most. Yeah, until any Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu is competing with him, competing with him until... What does he do? He comes that day with all of his wealth to the Prophet ﷺ to give it fi sabilillah. And then Umar realizes, you know what? I can't compete with this man. He, he's, you know, there's something in his heart that makes him outdo everybody. Now, this relates to a very important question that has just come to us through WhatsApp. And the viewer is asking, how come we are forgetful of Allah at times as believers? Okay. Man... Yani is al-insan, yeah? Man, human being. Some of the scholars talk about this coming from the word nasiya or to forget, right? And we know the heart, the scholars who speak about the heart, it's called the heart qalb because it has a lot of changing. Uh, so part of the test is the distraction, okay? Life is a distraction. Life is a distraction. Now, in the hadith of Tirmidhi, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, لَمَّا خَنَقَ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ وَالنَّارِ When Allah created heaven and hell, paradise and the hell fire, He sent Jibreel alayhi salam to have a look at paradise and what He had prepared for the slaves. Now, paraphrasing the hadith, so Jibreel alayhi salam goes, he looks at the paradise and he says, no one's going to hear about it except that he's going to make sure he enters it. That was the first visit. Then Allah surrounds paradise with hardships. And then uh, Jibreel alayhi salam is sent back to paradise and he looks at it and sees all the hardships surrounding it. And then he says, I fear no one is going to be able to enter it. Because of all the hardships, how are they going to get through all the hardships? Then likewise, he's sent to hell. And the first visit, nothing surrounding it. And Jibreel alayhi salam says, anyone who hears about it is going to make sure he doesn't enter it. Then he sent a second time when now uh, the hellfire is surrounded with all types of lusts and desires. And he says, I fear no one will be saved from it. Okay? So, the distractions of life, the distractions in this world, are there for that purpose to test you. Will you be distracted? And how long and how far will you go in that distraction? Or will you remind yourself and pull back? Your iman holds you in good stead and pulls you back. So this is the test. 
Some people will fail because they chose to fail. They chose to give precedence over Allah and his deen and give that preference to the dunya. That's the test. That's why we become oblivious. That's why we forget. Because all of the glamour and glitter of this world and forgetting the akhirah, that's why we forget. And part of being human is also to forget. Yep. That's because the test. Human being. Yeah, that's the test. Okay. Thank you very much for that. But the reminder, remember the Quran is called a dhikr, the reminder. Mm -hmm. So when the reminder comes to you or you have the reminder, you remember. Is it from this verse? Inna nahnu nadzalna dhikra wa inna lahu laha. Yeah, and this verse and other verses. Other verses. Okay. Various times Allah calls the Quran a dhikr in the Quran.